Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone, wherever you happen to find yourself in the world. My name is Carmen Mazera. I serve as Executive Director of APSIA, the Association of Professional Schools of International Affairs, to which your graduate programs belong. We are the community of graduate schools worldwide that specialize in all of those many wonderful dynamics of international affairs. Included in our work is the chance to connect you as students and staff at APSIA schools with amazing organizations like the Asian Development Bank. And so we're so glad that our colleagues from ADB were able to join us all the way in many cases from Manila where it's quite late um, to talk to you about their internship programs and their young professional programs and the many opportunities you have to get involved in their work. As we go through, if you have any questions for our speakers, please feel free to put them in the chat. If you have any technical issues, please feel free to send me a direct message. Again, I'm Carmen Mazera from APSIA. And with that, I am very pleased to turn the floor over to Heidi Lazari. Heidi, please. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Carmen, for inviting us and uh, well, for to present before APSIA. And thank you to all the participants today. Uh, with me today, I'm joined by colleagues First of all, I'm Senior Human Resource Specialist at the Asian Development Bank. I've been with ADB for more than 20 years. And joining me today are colleagues. Uh, we have Ms. Sangita Simon. She's a Human Resource Specialist. She will be covering the Young Professionals Program uh, briefing today. Joining her is Will Don Oler. He is a Human Resource Officer, also with ADB. And joining me today is uh, Nimrod Guevara. He is a human resource consultants supporting the internship program. And we are graced by the presence of uh, a, past, a recent past intern, uh, Surabi Mohan. Uh, she is an intern in our private sector operations department. And we also have Brian Liu. Uh, I believe he'll be joining at a later time. Uh, Brian is a senior planning and policy specialist at uh, strategy and policy department. And we also have Milan Thomas, who is a current YP with Economics Research and Regional Cooperation Department. So um, I'd like to, to start the discussion with the presentation. So let me just uh, share my screen. Can you see it now? Sorry, Carmen, can you hear the the No, the unfortunately the video isn't, I don't hear the sound in the video. Oh, okay. Let me uh, do this again. Apologies for that. Okay, maybe we could try the presentation first and then I'll show the video. Will that work? Sounds Sorry good. about that. Okay. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Uh, we'll get back to that later. So I'll introduce first ADB's internship program. So ADB's internship program is a two plus, uh, two plus because uh, you could extend the internship program, but basically 
At the minimum, it runs for eight weeks. It's a targeted learning opportunity for graduate students and heavily involves the host departments and field offices. Uh, our discussion for today covers uh, what, what I will call the standard ADB internship program. And I say so because there is another internship program that we cover, which is what we call the sponsor-funded internship programs with selected universities. And these are with Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, Tsinghua University, and University of Tokyo. But they have different set of criteria and selection processes. So what are the objectives and the benefits for the internship program? So for graduate students, uh, it gives them the opportunity to work in a major international development organization with a multicultural environment. So ADB has a total membership of, membership of 68 countries, uh, 49 of which are regional member countries or within the Asia Pacific region and 19 non-regional member countries. It also gives graduate students the opportunity to gain a deeper understanding of development finance, ADB's work, and the impact of ADB in addressing the challenges in the Asia Pacific region. It also gives the opportunity for the interns to learn from experienced professionals as the interns are directly supervised by specialists within ADB in their areas of interest. And lastly, it gives the interns an opportunity to present their outputs in a public forum within the ADB. So for ADB, uh, the benefits include identifying possible future candidates for staff positions. And in fact, currently we have 15 staff who were past interns themselves. Two of them have uh, are senior staff positions or uh, director, director level. It also gives uh, the opportunity for ADB to gain support for policy research and uh, share the knowledge with the broader academic community through the interns. And it also supports the overall business needs, um, operational priorities of the ADB in line with Strategy 2030. And lastly, it allows ADB to partner with selected academic institutions. So what are the eligibility requirements for a candidate to apply for ADB's internship program? So first, uh, the candidate must be enrolled in a graduate program, either a master's or a PhD level program prior to and after the internship assignment at the university within an ADB member country. The internship candidate must also be engaged in academic study in a field directly related to ADB's work. So within the operational priorities, but this is not to say that it's just confined with the operational priorities because we also get interns for support departments, for example, in controllers department, uh, also in strategy and policy department and Office of Anti-Corruption and Integrity. Candidates must also have the relevant professional experience as this is part of the selection process and must be a national of one of ADB's member countries. Some um, ineligibility requirements here, just to mention, so past interns cannot apply in ADB's internship programs in subsequent years. So if if a student has already been an intern in their master's uh, level program, then they cannot apply anymore when they pursue their doctorate degrees. ADB also does not accept applications from close relatives of ADB staff, except spouses of international staff. And here we have defined um, how we are considering close relatives. With regard to the internship assignment, the annual intake is about 30. It could be plus or minus depending on the budget availability, but generally it's uh, 30 interns per year. We have two batches. Our uh, first batch, the application period is ongoing right now. There are, I believe, 17 internship opportunities in our website. So if you're interested, please visit them. The application period runs for eight weeks um, and it will close on 15 September. Selection uh, is completed around November and the assignment begins January onwards the following year. So for this, for this intake, it starts in January 2023. For batch two, um, we, the application period runs from 15 December to 15 February. Selection is concluded around April and the assignment begins in June. So what are the benefits of being an ADB intern aside from, of course, getting that exposure in ADB and working in the Asia Pacific region? 
So we provide stipend for the duration of this, the assignment. Uh, this is currently $70 per day and are under review. So it could, uh, could potentially be adjusted. We also provide a limited allowance to cover part of air travel. Uh, if air travel will be required to, to move to the duty station from the point of origin of the interns. And we also uh, reimburse related costs for obtaining visa if, if needed. During the eight-week internship period, the intern could uh, go off sick or vacation leave for a maximum of four days. If the internship is extended, then additional leave days are provided as well. With respect to insurance, ADB also provides limited insurance coverage within the period of the internship under its global group insurance plan for visitors. So let me hand over to Sangeeta now for the Young Professionals Program. Sangeeta, over to you. Thank you so much, Heidi. So now I'll briefly talk about the Young Professionals Program, also known as the YPP. So the Young Professionals Program is a very prestigious program for the institution, but it's also very highly competitive. Many of our former YPs are currently in leadership roles at the ADB. So we hire young professionals for a three-year fixed-term period, which can be extended or regularized based on your performance or business needs. We are seeking highly qualified candidates who show potential to grow and become future leaders of uh, the institution. So in order to be eligible, you have to have a strong academic uh, track record. You have to be less than 32 years of age prior to joining ADB. You should hold a master's degree or a PhD and have at least two or more years of relevant professional experience. But typically just looking historically at our data, most of our candidates have at least three to five years of experience. You also need to be a member country national. As a YP, you get uh, to work on a range of um, you get a range of experience. After your first year of joining, you will rotate assignments across different functions and departments. You can even be outposted in a resident mission to gain field experience. You will also get to work with some of the world's best experts on projects, sector and policy studies, country programming, and et cetera. I will not uh, talk too much about uh, the projects and programs because I'll allow Brian, who is a former YP, um, to uh, talk about that once we're done with our presentation. Um, Next slide, please. So in terms of our um, assessment, thanks. To be a YP, you have to go through a rigorous selection process. Once you apply, you will be shortlisted based on how closely your profile matches with the requirements of the job. You will then be invited for a video pre-screening interview followed by a written assessment. And then you'll be called for uh, to do a presentation as well as a panel interview. This coming year, we're making some re reforms to the YP program. For instance, we're going to be introducing a YP committee who will help oversee the selection, rotation, performance, and, and absorption process for the YPs. The committee will be taking a look at your assessment scores, uh, your potential for a long-term career within the institution, diversity, as well as they'll be looking at your references and your transcripts. In terms of development, once you join ADB, we will provide you with development opportunities throughout your career. We provide plenty of training opportunities, both in-house and externally. I believe you get about 10 days of um, external training if you choose to avail of it. You will be assigned a mentor for the entire three-year uh, term. You will also be given a sponsor at the beginning of your uh, uh, first year who will show you the ropes within your department. Every two months or so, we host networking opportunities with heads of departments, including management, so you get to interact with them uh, and get to know them better. I will now pass it on to my colleague, uh, Wildit, who will take you through the next few slides. Thank you very much, Sangeeta. Um, can you hear me? I just wanted to check. All right. All right, so in the interest of time, I'm not going to talk in depth about the benefits we provide since we want you to hear from our colleagues, Brian and Milan, later as well. Uh, but just to name a few, uh, ADB offers competitive benefits such as relocation benefits, that includes airfare, um, settlement, and shipment allowances. We also provide 26 days of annual leave, rental assistance, home country travel allowances, paid parental leave of 26 weeks, educational assistance for eligible dependent children, medical insurance for you and for your family, um, etc. I think it's also important to mention at this point that uh, recently the ADB implemented a hybrid approach in working in the bank so all ADB staff will get to work from home twice a week 
and of uh, which 44 working days out of the duty station. We also provide spouse employment assistance and um, expat privileges. As mentioned, ADB offers a very competitive compensation and benefits package. So we would like to encourage you to check out our website for more details. Next slide, please. All right, so on the application and timeline, we will be posting our YP program vacancies in October um, this year. So it will be posted for one month. So just to keep an eye, uh, please keep an eye on that one. Um, and if you're interested, you can even subscribe to our vacancy so you can receive an alert once it is posted. Um, if, you're, uh, if you're shortlisted, you'll be invited for, <clears throat> excuse me, for a preliminary interview and written assessment between November and December. And then um, interview will be held in January and February of next year. Um, and uh, yeah, successful candidates will be offered uh, the YP role by March of 2023 and actual onboarding of or appointment should happen around August of next year. All right, next slide, please. All right, so yeah, so please visit our website for more information on the internship and YP program. You can also follow us on our social media page in Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Thank you. Over to you, Brian or Milan. Hi, Heidi, shall I jump in? Yes, please. Yes, Brian, Hi. go ahead. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Uh, great to be with you tonight or uh, this morning. Uh, my name is Brian Liu. I'm a senior uh, planning and policy specialist at the Asian Development Bank. Basically, I work in corporate strategy. Um, I'll leave three key takeaways with you, a bit about my background, a bit about how I got into ADB, and a little bit about what I've done since. So by way of background, I actually came in uh, working at a couple startups. Uh, I was in the tech media, media telecom space, uh, doing a corporate startup for some while. Uh, I came to the Philippines and I got some emerging market startup experience. And then I went to do my MBA at MIT at the Sloan School of Management. And uh, it is there where I uh, started looking into uh, entering ADB. And so um, in terms of my entry to ADB, I did both an internship uh, between my first and second year MBA. And then after graduating from the Sloan School, I joined ADB as a YP. Um, in case anyone's wondering, I was 32 at the time. So right at the YP cutoff, uh, I completed the YP program, and then uh, just a little bit about the experience since I've joined. Uh, I started off uh, in the private sector operations. So basically I was a banker. Uh, I did various product groups. I did private equity funds. I did project finance. I did corporate finance. I did IPO, equity investing. And, uh, um, and, and I also did in-house strategy for the private sector operations. I did, so I did banking pure banking uh, from the investment commercial side for about seven years. Um, from there, I did a, uh, I switched to um, the HR department where I did corporate planning from a workforce planning perspective. I did that for a couple of years. So basically I was doing corporate admin stuff, um, but very much focused on how to expand the investment banking operations of the bank. And then last year, uh, until now, I've switched purely to strategy. So now I'm doing corporate strategy uh, from, uh, again, from the private sector's perspective, how to uh, grow the, um, the investment arm of the bank from a more holistic side, corporate side. So all throughout this time, again, so the, my background was TMT space, startups, went to MIT, gone to, in, in, into ADB from as an intern, joined the YP program, and I've done various op, uh, aspects of the operations uh, since then. I've been a sponsor, I've been a mentor, I've got had great development opportunities in terms of learning throughout the time. I'm happy to talk about all of this. I guess what I'll leave you with is an interesting piece of trivia. Uh, out of my graduating class at MIT, uh, and, I, and this is all anecdotal, I don't have any empirical evidence, but a lot of my classmates who went into their various fields have kind of moved on from job to job. But I graduated in 2011, and I'm still with ADB. So 
that says probably a lot about my experiences. So I'll leave it there. Happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Thank you so much, Brian. May I call on Milan? Oh, thank you, Heidi. Uh, but uh, actually, I, I'm a late addition on behalf of the uh, 2020 cohort, and I, I think there's uh, no need for my background. My experience is uh, uh, much more limited than than Brian's, and I think the more that you hear from Sangeeta, Don, and Brian about the YPP, uh, the better. So I'll just um, uh, be ready to help answer any questions if needed, um, and please, if anyone here wants to reach out to me by email, uh, especially if you're wondering about the experience of economists in the YPP, I'm happy to to get to be in touch with you. So thank you. Thank you, Milan. May I call on Surabi? Surabi? Yes, uh, hello. Uh, thank you so much, Heidi. Thank you for having me. Uh, so just to let everyone know, I'm not a YPP. I was an intern uh, this summer at the uh, Asian Development Bank, um, and I was working in the private sector operations department and focused specifically on private equity funds investment. Um, uh, by my uh, my background, uh, basically, I'm pursuing my master's in public administration at Columbia University, and I'm specializing in international finance and economic policy. So um, um, just to give you a bit of um, um, share my experience about how my experience was uh, this summer. Uh, firstly, I was one of the few lucky ones who was able to travel to Manila and come to the headquarters and work with my team real time because I think um, that's one of the um, I think that's one of the necessary things about working in uh, private equity uh, because things move very quickly uh, and um, getting hands on uh, experience was really uh, enriching for me. I got to learn a lot. Um, given that um, you, Asian Development Bank is focusing on private equity investments in an emerging market, in emerging markets. So uh, this, this space is very exciting, very interesting. Uh, so I got to uh, explore a lot of sectors like healthcare uh, and learn a lot. Um, and for me, it was working with some really interesting and passionate people who uh, want to make the most impact in their limited time that they have. So um, for me, it was a great learning experience and I would highly recommend the internship program for anyone who has the skill set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Surabi. Carmen, over to you. Thank you all so much. We have some great questions in the chat. Um, some of which are about eligibility, um, but some are, are just broadly defined. And I encourage everyone who has questions to please put them in the chat as we go. So we have one question about eligibility and Heidi, I'll kick this to you, but, but tell me who, to whom it belongs. Um, one of our colleagues does have three years of their mandatory military service. And so they're wondering how that would relate to their consideration, um, particularly because they'll be 33 next year. So they're just wondering how that relates to the, the age of eligibility. Carmen, so this is related to the internship, is it? I'm going to have to ask our student to, to clarify that. Um, they don't specify in their question. Okay, so uh, assuming it's for internship, we don't have an age eligibility in internship, but what, at the, what is required is they should be students before and after the internship program. And with respect to the, to the background, uh, of course, the relevant professional experience will be considered by the host departments and the offices when reviewing the application. So I would encourage those who are interested in the internship to visit our uh, internship opportunities at the moment and see what is suitable to you. It, it outlines and it gives details as well on the specific internship assignment, as well as the desired uh, qualification. Thank you. Thank you. And actually related to that about, about student status, if a student is graduating in December, does that make them ineligible for the internship? I would say yes, because the internship, uh, particularly for the first batch starts in January, 2023. Thank you. 
Um, and we've heard a little bit from some of the profiles of the amazing candidates you've selected, but are there other tools that you have to talk about what successful past candidates look like, what kind of things they've brought to the table so our students know what to highlight in their applications for both internships and YPP? Maybe I'll uh, ask Sangeeta to respond on the YPP. Sangeeta? So in terms of what we're looking for, you know, what we basically look at first when uh, shortlisting candidates is the uh, responsibilities that are needed for the job, right? So we look at the terms of reference very carefully and compare it with what the candidate brings to the table. Uh, in addition to that, in terms of, I know you had uh, briefly, uh, well, we had not mentioned about the soft skills. So we look for people who are, you know, innovative, who uh, are willing to, um, you know, learn and adapt uh, very quickly to the changing needs of the institution, uh, people who are great team players. Um, so these are some of the key skills that we look at during the uh, screening process and the selection process. I'm not sure if that answered the question. So it's really rooted in the job description and, and what students can draw out from that information. Correct. Maybe Sangeetha, I can jump in with my own experience as an intern. So. So, so the, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but every year um, there's a call out for internship proposals um, across the entire bank and everyone in the bank submits a proposal for an internship. I think that's, just the, I think that's still the way it's done, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, in my particular year, um, um, there was a call out for an internship that dealt with uh, quantitative analysis and awareness, i.e. marketing materials for one of the specific product groups that was being offered by ADB, which was trade finance. Now, when I look through the internship lists, um, I mean, there was like 12 or 15 different internship opportunities you really had to zero in on the one that kind of best match your own individual profile. Uh, in my case, I zeroed in on this one because one of my startup experiences before I went to my MBA school was in import and export and trade. So I had a, a familiarity with trade and supply chain and this space, if you will. And then when I was at the Sloan School, one of the areas that you know you get professionally trained on is marketing and quantitative analysis. So it was really about positioning my application and positioning my story uh, towards fitting towards what the department at the time was looking for via its internship proposal. So it was a combination of understanding what the different opportunities were there in terms of internships at the time, um, communicating with people who are inside the bank to kind of understand and help to translate to me what the requirements and the uh, were for that particular internship deliverable and then understanding myself and positioning myself and my application in order to match what it was that they were looking for and I guess one kind of tip to provide uh, what I what I what I say to all potential applicants whether they are interns or YPs or actually uh, or, or you know regular full-time employees is you know reach out to your networks uh, connect with people from your alumni group who are currently at ADB learn as much as you can um, about the opportunity get some inside uh, track on translating what's what it is that uh, is being presented in terms of the opportunity because you know, in the MD, MDB and DFI space, there's a lot of internal jargon uh, that kind of, um, that you'll hear, that, you, that you'll frequently come across that kind of uh, means something within the development world, uh, development finance space. So having someone uh, from your alumni base and typically alumni tend to be very helpful with their, uh, with their, with their peers uh, really helped in, again, helping me to understand what my value addition was and position my application such that when, uh, uh, when, the, when the person who was reading my application, uh, uh, you know, could see a good fit. 
and, and that was kind of my entry point in as an intern. So hopefully that's a, a, a piece of a, a tip or experience that, that, that is helpful. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. My colleagues in the alumni and career offices appreciate the, the free advertising and a good promotion for them to, uh, for students to get in touch with them. And actually that's a good uh, challenge too. Can you all remind us when those descriptions will come out so that students can start to dissect them as Brian did and think about their connections and their, their match within their own experience? Is that October? Yes, for the YPP, it will be posted in October for a month. If I could supplement a Carmen, Brian did touch upon in very important points, right? Like matching your experience or interests as well and in terms of what is required for the specific assignment. So uh, I failed to mention earlier that part of the selection process is that, you know, the host departments and the offices uh, who are soliciting the interns uh, would be conducting interviews. So that is also the opportunity to get to know more about the internship candidates and for the internship candidates to know more about the internship assignment. Um, I don't know if Surabi has something to add based on her own experience here. Surabi, would you like to come in? Uh, sure, why not? Uh, okay, so for me, I, uh, I did have a background in private equity. So for me, uh, applying to that role was, um, was a no brainer because I had that experience and now I would get the chance to uh, basically explore private equity in new markets. Uh, so for me, that was a huge plus point. And I knew this was something that I uh, definitely wanted to pursue more. So for me, I just, my entire application revolved around how I do have some skills, but this is what I'm looking forward to in this internship, getting exposure to a new market. So my entire application was based on this. And um, as has uh, been mentioned, please uh, use LinkedIn, reach out to people uh, in your network who are at the ADB or have done this before to guide you. I, I think I would have spoken to at least 30 or 40 people before I'd applied to the program. And um, Incidentally, when I had, I actually cold called a lot of people at EDB too uh, via LinkedIn uh, to make sure that I get this internship. I, in fact, even hit upon the person who was in recruiting for this particular internship. And I think that's how they realized how desperate I am <laughs> that I wanted this one so bad. So, um, yeah, so all your resources, make sure you use them and utilize them well. Uh, and of course, um, you do have to write an essay. And Janine, essay is because this is the space I, know that I belong to and I want to do stuff in the development work and I'm really passionate about it and that's exactly what I write in all my applications express my interest about what I can bring to the table and why do I want to do this so um, that's uh, that was my approach uh, towards getting this internship again that's such a great connection about knowing the job and knowing yourself and, and making those connections I'm curious both of our or many of our colleagues here come from the the finance world some of our students may come more from the development space or a focus on, on Asia as a region. Um, to our colleagues who do the hiring and, and do the screening, are there good linkages that you see between those fields and what's going on at ADB and ways for students who don't come from a finance background to, to translate their interest uh, into terms that ADB would find appealing? I would def definitely uh, say yes, of course. Uh, we have people from you know, the economics field, from public policy, from the health sector, um, climate, environment. So we hire from a wide range of sectors. So yes, it's not definitely limited to finance. Heidi, anything you wanna share on the internship front? With regard to the internship, uh, Carmen, it uh, really depends on business need, like what Brian had touched upon briefly. Uh, every year, we solicit proposals across the department. Uh, that is an indication of what their needs would be in the next year for internship opportunities. So from, from the internship perspective, it would be kind of hard to predict because it's very uh, business need specific uh, at the time that we solicit the proposals. So, thank you. Thank you. A couple of questions about timing, particularly for internships. One is whether the January internship can be done remotely. And then the second one looks at the, what for many students would be summer vacation, so June through August. 
and wondering when they should apply if that's the window that they have for internships. Should that be the second round or how does all of that work with the sequencing of, of study? So for what is advertised at the moment, this is for the January 2023 intake. Uh, so the application is open until September 15. Uh, in terms of timing, uh, in some cases, it could be uh, delayed a little bit, but that depends on uh, a mutual agreement with the supervisor. Uh, with respect to, to remote, we have been doing internship remotely, I believe, for the past two years. Uh, Nimrod, my colleague, is also here. He could speak to that. But for this, for next year's intake, we encourage uh, already face-to-face -face because ADB has also reached stage four, wherein staff are also expected to come to office beginning September 1, reporting in office three days in a week, and then working from home within duty station two days in a week. So we will be applying the same with our interns. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can an individual who has interned with ADP in the past still qualify for YPP, Sangeeta? Yes, of course. And in fact, the internship serves as a pipeline for a YP uh, program. So I definitely encourage you to apply. And in listing all of the amazing benefits that you all provide, uh, one student is curious what expat privilege means. Heidi, you probably have more experience on this. I would say tax-free uh, benefits. Uh, you're able to also ship a car uh, for free without having to pay taxes. There may be additional benefits. I'd ask my colleagues to elaborate. Um, sorry, let well me done, just quickly yes. jump in. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, um, I turned off my video because my of my intermittent internet connectivity. But I hope you can hear me well. Um, the, on on the expatriate benefits. So that's um. Uh, the appointment and relocation benefits um, that as I mentioned earlier, uh, that uh, the travel, um, installation and settlement allowances, uh, shipment allowance and vehicle shipment, as mentioned by Sangita, uh, we also provide the, the rental allowances for um, for for the staff. Um, uh, this, this is suitable for the self accommodation within the fifty kilometer radius in ADB office. So this is amounting to around one hundred sixty eight thousand pesos. Um, and uh, there's also home country travel, which I mentioned earlier. Um, this is for the staff and eligible dependents. Um, uh, that includes also home country travel, airfare, and allowance for, for the staff and for the dependents. Um, on top of that, we also provide dependency allowance um, um, for, for the spouse and the, and the children. Uh, educational assistance um, for three eligible uh, dependent children. Um, between three to twenty-three years of age, so um, I think that's uh, that's that's most of it actually. So if you have any questions in particular in any particular de um, dependent or dependency, uh, sorry, expatriate benefits, you can you can um, send it to us. Thank you. Thank you. Any others who want to jump in on that? Sure. Why don't I put that into some real terms for? Uh, to translate what the policy is and what it's like for me. I've got a spouse and three kids. Um, and uh, three of my kids go to international school here in Manila. Uh, and their their international school tuition is uh, part of the education benefits. It's not fully covered, but you know there's a uh, it, it's subsidized by the bank. Um, we get uh, home country travel. I'm Canadian. Um, and uh, so I get a uh, trip back home once a year. Um, we have great medical benefits. Um, I call it the Rolls Royce of health insurance. And uh, I, I get to import a car, um, tax, tax and duty free, uh, one car. Uh, so it, you, you have to buy your other car if you, uh, if you have kids and they have their own schedules. So uh, that's kind of a more practical application and of, of what, uh, what what these benefits mean. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Um, sometimes it does help to sort of translate it into, into reality. Um, I was hoping our folks could go back to the slide about um, batch one and batch two. We have a couple of questions about how that plays out, um, whether students can apply to both, 
So could you could you review that section one more time for us, please? This one, Carmen? Yes, please. Yes. Yes, yeah, so uh, application period for the first batch, which starts in January next year, is already ongoing. This is, uh, this is over here. So these are the 17 internship uh, assignments or opportunities that could be seen from our website. Selection is expected to be completed in November. And the assignment starts in January 2023. And then batch two uh, will be posted towards the end of this year until 15 February. And then selection is completed around April with the internship assignment starting in June onwards. Thank you. And hopefully that, that answers some of the questions I've seen in the chat about, about all the timing and, and sequencing. I'm curious to so many different intergovernmental organizations have YPP programs. Are there things that you all find stand out about the ADBs in particular? And similarly with internship programs, um, so many of our colleagues in the MDB and IGO space have these kinds of opportunities. And of course, all of our students are amazing and, and highly competitive for them. So what do you think it is about the ADB that makes it so distinct? Um, and our students should really think about you all as an option. Well, uh, I would say, and other colleagues on the call can come in, uh, I would say, of course, ADB is the prime institution in supporting and developing, uh, addressing challenges within the Asia and the Pacific region. And uh, what has already been mentioned by Sangita and Brian and all other colleagues in the call is that it gives them the opportunity to really work with experts who have done projects uh, that demonstrated an extensive experience uh, doing all, all, uh, all areas. So we have strategy 2030, we're in their seven operational priorities. These are very much cross-cutting uh, and addresses the needs of the challenges of the developing member countries of, of uh, ADB covers. And uh, it also gives them the opportunity not just to work in operations, but also in support departments. Uh, like what I mentioned earlier, there are internship opportunities also with audit, uh, also with doing economic research, um, anti-corruption integrity, even corporate services department, for example, for facilities management. So there are wide range of opportunities that are available. Um, anybody who would like to come in in here? So I'm fairly new in terms of taking over the YPP. And in fact, um, I just joined ADB about a year ago and I come from the IMF. So I can only compare it to the program that they have. So just uh, sort of, you know, uh, understanding the YPP here compared to the EP program at the IMF. I know um, with, uh, with the ADB, you get to rotate multiple times within your three-year uh, term. Uh, at, the, at the fund, it, it's just uh, one, uh, one rotation that you have within three years. Uh, the other difference I see is, um, the ability, ability to be outposted in a resident mission. Um, whereas at, at the fund, you just have to stay within headquarters, right? So this gives you a wide uh, range of uh, experience. Also, we provide uh, mentorships and we uh, offer sponsors, which is something that you know, uh, we haven't done there. So, uh, so these are some of the uh, key ones that I can see, but I will pass it on to Brian or Millen if you, uh, if you wanna speak more about it to see what makes our program stand out. Sure, I, I'll come in with my own view and happy to invite Milan to come in and share his. I guess in one word, um, what I would say about the ADB program is that there's so much opportunity, right? Um, where, where, where there is, uh, you know, relative to some of the other organization, we may be a little bit smaller than for, for you know, perhaps some of the global institutions that have kind of the global footprint, we're very focused and therefore we're very scrappy and we're very, um, uh, uh, you know, there, there's so much opportunity for you um, if, if, if you just uh, kind of position yourself for what's available. And I'll give you an example. Um, you know, uh, uh, if, if you had asked my 
particularly my, my particular graduating class, if anyone is interested in emerging market private equity experience, I think half the class would express interest. And whereas, you know, perhaps some larger institutions that are have a, a longer history um, may have a little bit higher of a barrier to entry in order to get into that space. Well, you know, at ADB, um, if you can demonstrate a, a certain capacity to learn and develop and grow and apply yourself, um, I mean, th the opportunity is there for you. So in my own experience as a YP, um, you know, I, 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 you know, you know, I, again, I came from a different background. I came from a background that involved startups and entrepreneurship and trade and whatnot. But uh, when I um, came to ADB, it was it was still initially as a YP, continue on with uh, the the supply chain finance kind of space that you uh, had been working on. But hey, you know, if you have an interest in private equity funds, um, you know, we've had some turnover. We need we need you to um, bring that energy and interest and curiosity into that space. Um, are you interested? And I said, yeah. So away I went. And, um, you know, it was an opportunity. I took it um, and, um, and, and, you know, just applied that kind of um, mindset to, to, to learn and grow uh, uh, with the YP uh, program. And I ended up uh, getting an amazing um, experience for a number of years on the private equity funds team. Uh, and uh, that same kind of mindset, then, uh, you know, you, you could apply that approach to other aspects because the bank is growing. The bank has um, uh, a path of, uh, as an ambitious, ambitious journey ahead of itself. So um, again, opportunities there. You don't need to come necessarily from uh, a pure banking experience. Of course, it helps in certain contexts. Like uh, sometimes they're looking very specifically for a particular type of banker, but that's not necessarily the case all the time. Uh, if you demonstrate a particular capacity, um, I think uh, the bank is very welcoming to um, to 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 um, to you in terms of uh, the opportunities that it provides. Thanks. Thanks to you all. Um, a few, clearly, um, the experience is amazing, and, and I say that not only because of what you've shared, but because of all of the great questions we still have in the chat coming in. So a few more about eligibility to make sure that our students are, are qualified. Um, first is about age and wondering whether the age limit of 32 years, I believe this is for YPP, is at the time of application or the time of onboarding? Um, that was part of it. And then another question on eligibility was about those years of professional experience and how that's calculated and whether part-time work is, is included in that. So thank you, I think this is for you both on the age front as well as on, on how years of experience are, are put together. Sure. So in terms of the age, you have to be 32 prior to joining ADB. So if um, you, know, it's, you still have some time between the application period and actually joining in 2023. Uh, what was the other question, Carmen? How years of work experience work are calculated experience and calculated. whether part-time counts. Yes. So part-time work does count as well. You'll just be given 50% credit, uh, and, but it has to, you know, all your years of experience has to total up to two or more years of experience in order to be considered. Thank you. I also have one on the flip side of that for both YPP and the internship. If someone came into their graduate program straight out of undergrad, has some internships, but not any professional work experience, um, how does that affect their competitiveness and, um, and eligibility? And they're also curious what they can do to improve their chances of being selected, but they don't specify whether that's YPP or internship. Heidi, would you like to go first in terms of the internship? Yes, so for the internship, um, I would say it's, it's also competitive, Carmen. Uh, although it will vary in terms of the internship assignment. There are internship assignments wherein there are a lot of applicants. And, and of course, uh, it will all be assessed together. So more ex relevant experience they would have in terms of demonstration, in terms of their CVs and through the telephone uh, interviews, then that makes them 
gives them the edge of, of getting the internship assignment. Uh, perhaps at this stage, I could also invite Nimrod. Nimrod is our HR consultant for the internship program. Nimrod, do you have anything to add? Yes, thank you, Heidi. Uh, yeah, like uh, Miss Heidi mentioned. Um, this Nimrod, we can't, we can't hear you very well. Uh, sorry about that. Hold on. Yeah, I turned off my camera. Um, is that better? Yes. Hello? Yeah. Uh, so like Ms. Heidi mentioned, um, yeah, this will all depend on the needs of the project or um, depending on the hiring manager because uh, even though the, especially, uh, well, particularly for internships because for internships, uh, they will, they can, they can, the, the number of years of experience may or may not, uh, may or may not uh, affect their applications. But uh, of course, if they have year, uh, they have years of experience, they will, uh, they will be more qualified uh, or they will be more considered. So, and also I've been, I've been checking on the, on the chat box here. I just want also to qualify or some clarify some 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 questions here regarding the batches one and two, because uh, there the uh, there's a question here if they need to apply for both batch one and two to be considered. So, uh, like Brian mentioned, uh, the assignments are are for a particular project. So if if the applicant wants to be considered for a certain project, so they need to uh, they need to apply for that project. It does not depend on what batch it is. So they need to check each and every one of those projects. If they want to apply to more than one, that's also that's also allowed. If they did not qualify for batch one and they want to still try again in batch two, and they are still graduate students at that time then they can still go ahead and apply for batch two. And then there's another one here for the timing, which is uh, after undergrad or saying, if we have a summer vacation, June to August and all that, and that's the only time that they can apply and if they, can, if they, if they need to wait for that. If June, and June to August is their opening or if that's the time that they can go for an internship, then that's perfect for batch two because that's the onboarding for uh, for batch two, June, between June to August. That's it. Thank you for those, those important clarifications on timing. Yeah. We're almost at time. So students, this is a great chance for you to get those last minute questions in. I do see one more in the chat about citizenship. If you're an ADB citizen, the citizen of an ADB country, but studying in a non-ADB country, does that render you ineligible for the program or is it just based on your citizenship? It's based on your citizenship. Thank for you, the, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry, for the internship program, uh, the school has to be in one of ADB member countries as well. That's right, yeah. That's an important distinction, thank you. Um, any last questions that I'm, I missed in the chat? I don't think so, I think I caught everybody I would say, thank you then Heidi in particular, anything you wanna give as last tips for our students to make sure their applications stand out in a good way uh, when they apply to these wonderful opportunities? So I would say definitely uh, pay very close attention to the role and see if you can utilize some of the buzzwords from within uh, the you know, job description to highlight the skills and uh, experience that you can bring to the table. Heidi? Yes, so basically, <laughs> Carmen, yes, the, the same as what Sangeeta has said. Um, so we have, let me just reiterate that the internship batch one intake is already posted. So I do encourage you to please check that out and see what fits your profile the most. Thank you. Thanks to both of you and to all of our, our current and, and former interns, and YPPs, and all of the staff at ADB for speaking with us today. Thanks to all of our students from around the world who've joined us in the middle of the night, in the middle of the morning, wherever you happen to find yourself. 
This recording will be available on APSIA's YouTube page by the end of today, and I've put the YouTube link in the chat. And uh, I also want to thank our colleagues at ADB Narrow, the North American Regional Office, for connecting us with the amazing people in Manila. We look forward to seeing our students at future APSIA webinars and hopefully filling the halls of ADB with amazing APSIA graduates as interns and YPPs. So thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day, however much of it is left. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.